Truth Ministries on YLC TV with Mark Moore Jr. Your strength, healing, and empowerment starts now. Well, praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, Lord, everybody. Uh, There we go. There we go. There we go. Let's let's begin uh, with what I believe has become at least my mantra for this season. This is still the day. 
that the Lord has made, and we will choose uh, to rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to uh, another service here uh, at Spirit and Truth. This is, of course, a very different season, a very different time. Um, it seems that just when we started to grow, uh, we had to cut down to 10 members. We had to cut down to 10 members. I know we're practicing our social distancing in this season, and so I will not ask you to hold hands, but I will ask you to join hearts tonight. Would you just smile across the little living room and tell somebody you're glad to see them tonight? Come on, tell, there we go, there we go, there we go. Don't touch, don't touch. I, I cannot wait until the day I can tell you to lean over and grab your neighbor by the hand, but this is not that day. So we thank God for you in the room, and certainly those of you that are watching in our cyber sanctuary, uh, we are so honored that in a environment where there are a million churches, a million ministries, a million convocations online, you have tuned into this one. And we trust uh, that you will share this with somebody on your timeline. Now, in times like these, we really, really, really need a word from the Lord. Do I have a witness in here? And so I want us to jump into uh, the word even now, uh, because I, I believe that in this season, we're doing really what we're calling a coronavirus series. Um, someone said this is Corona Cathedral right now. <laughs> And so we're going to look to the Lord, but go with me to Exodus chapter 14. Everyone in the room I know has some kind of Bible uh, or electronic device. Those of you that are watching online, uh, we invite you to find and follow us in scripture. And then of course it's on your uh, screen as well as we're moving. But Exodus chapter 14, there's one verse that I wanna teach from tonight uh, that I really believe has the potential uh, to empower us and set us free. Look with me carefully at verse number 13. Uh, in chapter number 14 of the book of Exodus. When you've got it, just shout, I've got it. I've got it. Look with me at verse 13. It says, and Moses said unto the people, fear ye not. He said, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show to you today. He says, for the Egyptians whom you have seen today, look at what it says, ye shall see them again no more for." Ever. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your word. We recognize that we need it now more than ever before. Speak to our heart, those that are in the room tonight, those that are in our cyber sanctuary. Give us clarity in the midst of these confusing times. We thank you for the victory now in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. Amen, amen again. I want to talk just from a subject, if we could tag this tonight, simply from these words he's going to show you today. Would you just, uh, I know I'm, I'm getting delivered from touch your neighbor, but just tell your neighbor he's going to show you today. Show you Th today. Those of you that are watching, put that in the comments because we want to uh, uh, get this word out here. L let's begin by just acknowledging, and I think we all can say man to this, 2020 has been a year filled with Egyptians. Uh, yeah, this is, this is the longest three month period, the longest first quarter that I've ever experienced seemingly in my life. Life. It seems that this is a year where our testimony is everything that could go wrong has gone wrong. Uh, just a year of loss, a year of, of grief, a year of uncertainty, a year of anxiety. And the truth of the matter is this year has been filled with Egyptians, big Egyptians, small Egyptians, short Egyptians, tall Egyptians. I got Egyptians. You got Egyptians. All God's children got Egyptians. But when we think about Egyptians from a biblical standpoint, certainly we're not talking about our brothers and sisters that call Egypt home. But from a biblical standpoint, Egyptians represent those people or those things that have enslaved us. Yeah. Those attitudes, those fears, those uh, uh, addictions, whatever it is that fits your context, those things that have really enslaved us. And certainly, I think in the season that we're in, I think all of us are fighting a corporate Egyptian by the name of fear, right. a, a corporate Egyptian by the name of anxiety. Everybody, this is not something that's limited to any culture right now. This is not something that's limited to any ethnic group or, or another. This is something that has literally gripped the entire world. Everybody is feeling uh, anxious and a little fearful and a little uncertain. And I think the case could be made that many of us have been enslaved even emotionally to what's going on. Some of us have become victims or, or, or uh, we've become addicted to our cell phone. We've got all of our notifications on because we're not sure what's going to come down the pipe next. 
And so I was thinking about and praying about what to share tonight uh, to deal with this Egyptian of fear that has really gripped not just our society or our nation or our Western culture, but the entire world. And when you think about deliverance or freedom from Egyptians, certainly nobody comes to mind quicker than Moses, right? We, we know Moses. We love Moses. Moses, whose name means one drawn from the water. Moses, that we know uh, will go on and become the great deliverer. We see Moses here in a very interesting position in the 14th chapter of the book of Exodus. And notice what we see here. We read in our text tonight, verse 13, and verse 13 is where we shout. Verse 13 is good news. Verse 13 is a promise from God that the Egyptians we've seen today will see no more forever. But before we can get to the promise in verse number 13, we've got to go through the door, verse number one. Look with me. Let's go to work tonight. Look with me in verse number one. Verse one says, and the Lord spoke unto Moses saying, now stop right there. Because I want to submit to you, here's the first thing I need you to understand. Deliverance always begins with God speaking to your Moses. Wow. I need you to hear what I'm saying. Deliverance always begins with God speaking to your Moses. Now, why, why, why do we have to pay attention to this? Please don't miss this. Don't gloss over this. This is significant because you've got to realize everybody can't be Moses in your life. Yeah, everybody cannot be Moses in your life. Everybody cannot be the one that you allow to speak into your spirit. Can we tell the truth tonight? Some of us and some people that we know are in situations they could have avoided if they would have listened to the right voices instead of the wrong voices. Can I submit to you that sometimes the loudest voice is not the one you need to listen to? You can be loud and wrong. Can I get one witness in here tonight? Everybody cannot be Moses in your life. You need, we need, I need in this season to make sure that we have identified and we're listening to qualified, anointed, godly voices that can give us direction in uncertain times. Sure. So we understand God speaks to Moses first. God speaks to Moses first and he tells him, look at what he says. He says, Moses, I want you to tell the people to change direction. Everybody say change direction. Change direction. I want you to change direction and head down by the seashore. Now, what we've got to understand is that at this juncture, this is a significant moment for the people of God because they have just come out of Egyptian captivity. All right. They have just been free. You all remember the story. If you don't, let's go. Let's recap it for a moment. And it's almost scary to talk about what led them to this moment, because it almost seems like we're starting to see some of it now. Sure. But God has released plagues on the people of God. God has released plagues on the land of Egypt, I'll say. God has instructed Moses, go down to Pharaoh, tell him, I said, let my people go. He's told him this. Pharaoh would not listen. God had to release plagues. He sent flies to the land. He sent darkness. He sent frogs. He sent turn water into blood. All of these things until finally Pharaoh's heart would not listen. His heart would not turn. God had to release the death angel to go through the land. Releases the death angel to go through the land. He claims the life of all of the firstborn in Egypt, except for, I'm trying to get happy here because I feel it's such a neighbor coming, but I'm going to resist it. I'm going to resist it. He, he tells the people of God, this is the provision that I made for you in this time of pestilence. He says, what you got to do is take a lamb. Slay the lamb, take the blood of the lamb and put it on the doorpost of your home. Put it on the side of your home. And then he says, and this is the part that makes me happy. He says, and when I see the blood, Lord have mercy. I've got to, pay. I, where's the organ? I, I, we got to get back to church for real, y'all, because I, I miss that organ. When I see the blood, he says, I've got to pass over you. He's made provision for his people. The death angel has gone through the land. Pharaoh's heart has now been turned. He has released the people of God and they are now on their way to the promised land. They're marching. I need you all to see this now. They're, they're, they're walking down the street. Husbands are holding hands with their wives. They're singing. Their children are dancing in front of them. Tambourines are playing. People are running and skipping. After all of these years, they've finally been set free and they're on their way to the promised land. It's in this moment that God speaks to Moses and says, Moses, listen, I know that you've GPSed it. I, I know I know that you put it up in, in your in your maps app, but I need you all to change direction one more time. Say change direction. Change direction. You, you all are going the way that makes most sense to you. But I want you to go a different direction. This is what the Lord says. He says, I want you to go down by the seashore. He says, for I will get glory for myself through Pharaoh and the Egyptians will know that I am God. He, he, don't, don't, don't ignore what God says. He says, change direction, go a different way. 
because I'm going to get glory for myself through Pharaoh. Here it is. And the Egyptians will know that I am God. Now, I want us to really just just park here for a moment. I want to park here for a moment because I think it's crucial that we listen carefully what God is trying to say. He says in so many words, don't worry about what's about to happen. Change direction. I know I'm rerouting you. I know I'm taking you off the course that you had in mind. But this is the part that excites my spirit. He says at the end of the day, in so many words, there will be glory after this. Can I pause and submit to us in the room and those even that are watching in our cyber sanctuary and tell you that even in the this that we find ourselves in now, there will be glory after this. Oh, come on. I, I don't know. I don't know what your this might be. Your this might be sickness. Your this might be fear. Your this might be depression, financial uncertainty. But whatever your this is, there will be glory after this. That's good news for somebody tonight. He, he says there will be glory after this. I'm going to get glory for myself through Pharaoh. But then he says, and this is important, that the Egyptians will know that I am God. Yes. I, I want to be very careful and, and measure my words here. But I, I would not I would not be exercising my prophetic voice if I did not make mention of the fact that part of what we're seeing, even in this coronavirus pandemic, is an opportunity for God to let the Egyptians see who he is. Yes. Can I submit to you that in this, thank you, Jesus, in this moment, in this climate where everything we thought we could lean on is falling. Don't you realize that people who have had money are realizing their money cannot save them? Don't you realize people that have leaned on their stock portfolio are realizing that the stock market can change overnight? My stock portfolio can't save. Don't you realize that people that have leaned on their clout and their status are realizing my status cannot save me? We're in a position where people are getting ready to see that only God is God. And beside him, there is none of beside him. Your status is not there beside him. Your money is not there beside him. The stock market is not there. He's about to show the world that he is God. He said, he said, he said, he said, he said, the Egyptians will see that I am God. I believe right now that even through what's going on, the world is getting ready to see that he is God. We have made gods out of everything else, but we're about to see that at the end of the day, everything is going down, but the word of God. Yes. Go, go, go and change course, yeah. Yeah. change direction. It, I know, I know you're, you're going the way that makes sense to you, but I'm, I'm going to send you the long way. Go down by the Red Sea because I'm going to get glory through Pharaoh and the Egyptians will know that I'm God. They, they change course. They're still happy. They're jumping, they're dancing, they're celebrating. But look at verse five. I'm in verse five now. Verse five changes the scene because we've now gone from a conversation that God is having with Moses. And now we have an opportunity to eavesdrop on a conversation that the enemy is having with Pharaoh. Look at what verse five says. Verse five says, and it was told the king of Egypt that the people fled and the heart of Pharaoh and of his servants were turned against the people. And they said, why have we done this. Wait, wait a minute. Why have we done this that we have let Israel go from serving us? When verse five, don't you ever think for a moment that because God is speaking to you, the devil's not speaking to your enemy. There's a whole nother conversation going on in Pharaoh's court. And they essentially said, wait a minute. Pharaoh and his advisors, they said, wait, wait, hold on. Why did we let them go again? Said, hold on, wait, wait. We had yards that we didn't have to cut. We had cows that we didn't have to milk. We had dogs that we didn't have to feed. We had houses that we didn't have to keep up. We had yards that we didn't have to take care of. We, we, we had children we didn't even have to feed. We had a good thing going on with the slave labor. Right. They said, they said why, why did we release them? The Bible says that Pharaoh's army, they begin then to pursue after the children of Israel. Now, this is very important understanding. It's very important understanding tonight that we realize that just because you walked away from it does not mean it walked away from you. That there's some stuff in our yesterday. There's some stuff that God has delivered us from that has not released you yet. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying tonight. There's some stuff that cannot wait for you to get weak enough to call it again. There's some numbers that you have deleted that hell has bets out on. I wonder how long before they break this time. How long they go hold on to this deliverance? Sure. Just because you've been free from it does not mean it has released you. They begin to pursue after the children of Israel. Let's go a little further here because we're in verse 10 now. 
We're in verse 10 now. And the Bible says that when Pharaoh drew nigh, the children of Israel lifted up their eyes and behold, the Egyptians marched after them and they were so afraid. And the children of Israel cried out unto the Lord. Look at what they said. And they said unto Moses, because there were no graves in Egypt, have you taken us away to die in the wilderness? Wherefore hast thou dealt thus with us to carry us forth out of Egypt? Is this not the word we told you in Egypt? Look at how the people of God have changed their mind, saying, let us alone that we may serve the Egyptians. For it had been better for us to have served the Egyptians than to have died in the wilderness. They have done a complete reversal. They've completely changed course. They were singing and shouting five minutes ago. And now they're saying it would have been better for us to have stayed slaves. Now, here's here's the key that, that, that is linked to their turn of hearts and their turn of events. It's here. The Bible says they were fine. Here it is. Until they lifted up their eyes and looked behind them. Can, can I submit to you that we will never possess real deliverance as long as we're looking at what's behind us? You better hear what I'm saying, because what we got to realize is that if it's behind you, that means God has brought you out of it already. I know, I know, I know this is a different kind of church. I know this is a different kind of message. But, but is there anybody in here that's glad that God brought you out of some stuff that you don't have to look back at? Yes. Yes. Yeah, they were fine until they lifted up their eyes behind them. And, and, and so they're believing now the report that their eyes have given them. There are a lot of people in the world today that are believing the wrong report. We're looking at CNN and looking at the number of people that have died, and we're believing the report of CNN. We're looking, some of you, at your credit report, at your stock market report, and you're believing what they're saying about your money. You're believing that report. Some of us are believing the CDC's reports, and all of that is great, but I just want to know, I hope I get one witness here, whose report will you believe? Because some of us ought to have the mindset, I will believe the report of the Lord. Because even in the midst of uncertainty, the report of the Lord still says that I'm the head and not the tail. Even in the midst of uncertainty, the report of the Lord still says my God shall supply some of my needs, most of my needs. Somebody say all of my needs. Even in the midst of uncertainty, the report of the Lord still says no weapon that is formed against me shall prosper. And so they're looking and they're believing the wrong report. They're afraid. They're upset. They're anxious because they have focused on what God has already brought them out of. They're looking back and intimidated by something that God has already shown them. I'm stronger than. Even in the midst of this coronavirus, can I submit to you? This ain't the first pandemic the people of God have lived through. That's right. Can I submit to you, even in your life? No, you've maybe never seen a global crisis like this, but you've had your back up against the wall before and God showed you that he was on your side. They forgot, they forgot, they forgot. They're nervous, they're they're angry. They're looking at Moses saying, you should have left us where we were. Mm -hmm. And this is where Moses leads us into our text tonight. I like what Moses says because Moses gets with the Lord and, and, and says, God, what do you want me to do? How, how do I handle this? What do I, what do I do here? And then we find ourselves again in verse 13. Yeah. Moses said unto the people, he's talked to the Lord now. He's got confidence. He says, hey, all right, everybody calm down. This is what the Lord said. He said, number one, fear ye not. Yeah. Can I submit to you that the word of the Lord in this season for us as the people of God Again, as the people of God, our word is fear not. Don't have to be scared. Don't have to stay up at night wondering what tomorrow is going to bring because I know, I know in whom I have believed. He said, fear not, number one, fear not. Then he says, number two, here it is, stand still. Stop running around. In other words, I need y'all to quarantine for a moment. Stop moving, be still. Uh Fear not, calm down and get somewhere and sit down. Stand still. And this is what I want you to do while you're standing still. He says, see the salvation of the Lord. See, in other words, the deliverance of the Lord. See the saving power of the Lord. Here's the part that makes my spirit leap. He says, which he will show you today. Hey, y'all didn't hear what I said. I, I don't I don't care what the CDC said. I listen to them. I respect their wisdom. But I'm believing that we serve a God that can change stuff today. I believe we serve a God that can show us results today. He says, stand still, calm down, fear not and watch me work today. This is what he says. Don't miss this. He says, thank you, Jesus. The Lord shall fight for you and you shall hold your peace. 
He has told us here. He says, but the Egyptians that you have seen today, yeah. you shall see them no more forever. Yes. I want to submit to you as we get ready to close tonight, that even though this was written thousands of years ago, uh -huh. today with God is always in the present tense. Yeah. Can I submit to you? I know we, we, we're not at the Red Sea right now. We're right now in a family room in Atlanta. That's where we are. Some of you are watching this from, from kitchens and living rooms and basements and man caves all over the world. But I want to tell you that today with God is always in the present. It's, he has not lost a step. He has not fallen off. He is not at retirement age. Do you hear what I'm saying to you? And God is saying, I still have the power to show you today that the Egyptians that you've been dealing with, you don't have to see them anymore forever. Now, I want to be clear. I want to be clear because I don't want to be guilty of being a, a, a false prophet that will tell you that tomorrow you won't have no more issues and tomorrow you'll never have to cry again and tomorrow everything's going to be great. No, 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 no. They that will live godly shall suffer persecution. I want to tell you the truth. Tomorrow we'll have some trouble. Tomorrow we'll have some tears that you might have to cry. But if God is God and if his word is true, while tomorrow might have pain, it doesn't have to be the same pain from today. Can I submit to you that, that those of us that are in Christ Jesus, we can believe God that this thing got to end today. This thing got to come to an end. Whether, whether it's the fear that you've been dealing with, that fear can end today. Whether it's depression that the news has forced you into, that depression can end today. You might be listening to this. You might be watching this and you might be sick in your body. Can I tell you, God can still heal you today. Yes. What the vaccine can't do, God can. Yes. What the doctor and the surgical mask and the hand sanitizer and the Lysol cannot do, Jehovah can. Yes. And so I simply want to challenge us tonight. I want to challenge us to mature in our thinking, to realize that we serve a God that can show us today. But the Egyptians we've been wrestling with, yeah. the fear, the uncertainty, the anxiety, the difficulty resting, the, 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 the fear. Keep checking our accounts and trying to find where can I shave some money off of my expenses because I don't know what tomorrow's going to look like. All of that worry, God's going to show us today that we don't have to see that tomorrow. Yes, if you believe that tonight, even in this unconventional space, this is church of the future for right now. Can you just give God a praise that he's going to show you? Come on, come on. Better than that. Better than that. Better than that. Hallelujah. Come on, let me hear somebody. Even at home, lift your voice at home and give God praise right where you are. Because we're believing that God is going to show us today. We're believing that God is going to show us today. We're believing that God is going to, that we, we've been dealing with some of these Egyptians for too long. Some of, some of the stuff we've been wrestling with really goes back pre-pandemic. Sure. Some of you have been wrestling with stuff since 2010. God said that Egyptian has had too much space in your life. That thing can end right now. Yeah. I want to get ready to let us go tonight. We've had an awesome time in the Word, but I want to challenge somebody that's listening to the sound of my voice. I don't know who you are. I don't know where you're watching from. But maybe you're the one that this word was for tonight. Maybe you're the one that's wrestling with anxiety or fear, or just dealing with some things in your life that you know only God can deliver you from. If that's your testimony, if that's your reality, and you say, you know what, I want to be saved. The, the, the news has really just kind of reminded me of the importance of making sure that my heart is right with God. Looking at what's going on in the devastation and just being made aware of the uncertainty that my world holds. I need to make sure that I've got hope beyond this life because I don't know if tomorrow's even going to come. If you're here and listening and you want to be saved, I want you to contact us now. The information is on your screen. But I want you to contact us today because we have operators, we have prayer warriors, intercessors that are more than willing to pray with you and believe God for all he wants to do in your life. What do I have to do to be saved? How do I, what does salvation look like? I'm so glad you asked. The recipe, the formula is right there in the book of Acts, chapter number two. All you have to do is repent of your sins. Yes. Repentance is more than just saying, God, I'm sorry. But repentance is a turning and going in a new direction. Yes. He said, repent of your sins. God, I was going this way, but I'm going another way now. Yes. Repent of your sins. And then he said, be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Yes. What is baptism for? Baptism, the Bible tells us and teaches, is for the remission or the removal or the yes. taking away of our sin. Yes. 
And we recognize that there's no other name given unto heaven whereby we must be saved. And so we baptize in the name of Jesus because that's the only name that has the power to take our sins away. We pray in that name. We cast out devils in that name. We lay hands on the sick in that name. We bless our food in that name. It only makes sense that we would take on that name in baptism. But then he said, after you've repented of your sins, after you've been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus, he said that you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Friend, man, woman, boy, girl, I don't care who you are. I don't care where you're from. I want to let you know that you need the Holy Ghost. In this season, someone, well, do I need the Holy Ghost to go to heaven? Let's be honest. We don't even talk about heaven for a moment. You need the Holy Ghost to go to Walmart. Right. Do you hear what I'm saying? You need the Holy Ghost to keep your mind in these last of the last days. And I want to let you know it's not something you have to earn. It's not something you have to pay for. It's certainly not something you deserve or qualify for. It is a gift. You have the faith. You just have to have the faith to receive and believe that God has it for you. If you want to know more about what this looks like, we have literature that we can send you now. Contact us on the information that's on the screen and we'll see you next time. God bless you. We'll see you soon. Let's give God one more praise, y'all.